five on your side. Focus on you. This week on The Record, election results send Republicans reeling. I'm sick of Republicans losing. We've become a party of losers. How candidates tackled matters of ongoing war, rising prices, settling abortion, and more. Political science professor Anita Mannion breaks it all down for The Record. Was the presidential primary debate a race for second place, or can one candidate break out and catch the front runner? Border Wars, St. Louis County Edition. Manchester's fight to expand falls short. County Executive Sam Page is on the record. And why the Teamsters are promoting a letter from Senator Josh Hawley. It's all coming up right now. Welcome to The Record, I'm Mark Maxwell. The American people have spoken, at least in an off-year election. The next time election officials are counting ballots, the keys to the Oval Office will be up for grabs with those primary elections starting in just about two months in some early voting states. Ohio voters on Tuesday protected abortion access. Kentucky voters elected a Democratic governor. Pennsylvania voters elected a Democrat to the state Supreme Court. And Virginia voters elected Democrats to take control of the House of Delegates. In the Deep South, Republican Governor Tate Reeves held on to his seat by about 36,000 votes, the one GOP victory of the night. So what do these results mean for the direction of the country? Political science professor Anita Mannion has her Ph.D. in public policy and teaches American politics at the University of Missouri-St. Louis. She's here now to break it all down. It's good to have you with us. Thanks. Glad to be here. Uh, we saw those election results. We're going to get to that in a minute. We also saw this week on Wednesday night, the night after, the Republican candidates running for president, besides Donald Trump, get on that debate stage and duke it out. Right. Who won that debate? I think maybe a toss-up between Haley and DeSantis. They both had strong performances. DeSantis started out strong months ago in the polls and has really kind of declined and plateaued. So I think he did a good job of sort of trying to personalize himself last night, talking about his military experience and his experience growing up. Haley, I think, did a good job of moderating, showing her foreign policy experience, and also clapping back when some people came at her. Yeah, and the Republicans who were on that stage, uh, they gave a brutal assessment of the election losses the party suffered Tuesday night. But none of those races were in Missouri or in Illinois. So what can we take away from those results? What did we learn? I think we can step back and look at what happened in Ohio. Ohio is a red state, uh, went for Trump with similar margins to Missouri. They also had a referendum to try to make ballot initiatives more difficult back in August, similar to what our state legislature has tried to do, and voters voted that down. And then they just had an initiative on marijuana, which passed, but also probably more um, importantly on abortion, and that passed in a really red Ohio. It's interesting you point to that ballot question. Ron DeSantis specifically mentioned that during the debate on Wednesday night. He said that Republicans need to get better at those ballot questions, the way they phrase them, the way they frame the issue to voters. What could that look like, the DeSantis playbook in Missouri? Well, we saw how they tried to phrase the uh, ballot initiative. So that's actually went to the court because of the phrasing that was used by the Secretary of State. So they're trying to phrase that with more neutral language um, through the courts. The courts had said it was too partisan the way the Secretary of State phrased it. That's right. The judges are watering it down or, or making it more plain spoken. That's right. So they're trying to take some of the bias out of that language. But I think what's going to be a challenge in Missouri, in Ohio, we saw lots of different groups, including physicians, including ACLU and others, coalesce around the one ballot initiative. In Missouri, we have multiple ballot initiatives competing to get on the ballot. If more than one of those makes it, that could make it more challenging to succeed. The abortion question is something Democrats want to highlight. Republicans are trying to highlight Joe Biden's sagging poll numbers. The president was shrugging those numbers off. The polling recently that showed him trailing former President Trump in five of those six swing states. On this program, we often like to look back at a politician's record, what they've said, how they voted. But sometimes when you look at these polls, it gives voters and politicians a lot to think about. How should voters think about polls this far out from a general election? We are very far out. That's important to think about. But voters are frustrated with inflation and they are concerned about Joe Biden's age. You know, I hear this from folks on both sides of the aisle who are just unenthusiastic about him. Now, what it means now is that people who are disgruntled, does it mean that a year from now, if their options are Trump and Biden, that they might go ahead and make that Biden vote even though they're not excited. But I think what they have to worry about is voter turnout and those key demographics that are least enthusiastic about Biden, like people of color and young people who are reliable Democratic voters. Yeah, and there are uh, candidates of color on the Republican debate stage. There's a woman running, Nikki Haley. You mentioned she performed well uh, in that debate on Wednesday night. Um, 
how, what, I guess it all kind of revolves around Donald Trump. Let's ask a different question <laughs> because uh, Trump isn't appearing on these debate stages, but he could be facing criminal trials as voters are getting ready to make up their minds in these early voting stages. I mean, what, what's the risk portfolio like for Mr. Trump as he has to try and appeal to voters while he's on the witness stand, perhaps? I mean, there's a reason they call him Teflon Don, right? So I think that it is challenging for those voters who are worried about electability and those voters who might be more moderate, but they were probably already trending away from Trump anyway. He has this solid base that seemingly is unshakable. So I guess we'll find out in the next year if that holds true. And there's a lot of time between now and then. I mean, if he would have run the clock back just six weeks, eight weeks ago, you might not been able to, been able to predict uh, just all the, the, the global unrest and the things that have changed the political calculus there. President Biden has been taking a lot of heat from his left flank. We're going to get into that some uh, from people calling for a ceasefire, the progressives and, and some Democrats who want to see uh, that issue. I mean, can, I, I guess it's, it's interesting how he doesn't seem to face much of a primary challenge. Dean Phillips, the congressman from Minnesota, a Democrat, is now officially trying to challenge him there. Uh, what did you make of Vivek Ramaswamy saying, step out of the way, Biden, you're just a placeholder. We all know you're going to drop out. How real do, do you think that might be? Well, I have to say that Ramaswamy hearkened to several conspiracy theories, including um, that Zelensky is a Nazi. He also, this was a conspiracy theory during the 2020 election that we heard um, that Biden was just a Trojan horse for Kamala Harris or some other Democrat. So I felt like it was a bit reminiscent of that. I mean, it was a critique of Biden, but I think also maybe playing to some of those in the far right. Mm -hmm. uh, there are, though, Democrats, even David Axelrod among them, a former advisor to Donald Trump, or to, to Barack Obama, I should say, that'd be quite a surprise to Mr. Axelrod, uh, but who, who have suggested that uh, President Biden should consider stepping aside and passing the mantle to a younger generation. Absolutely. I think uh, there are a lot, a lot of folks within the party, a lot of voters who would like to see that stepping aside. And frankly, when Biden ran in 2020, he gave some signals that he would be a one term president, which I think made people feel a little more comfortable. If we look at the polls, Kamala Harris is polling better than him. Generic Democrat is polling better than him. So certainly there are those in his own party that like to see him drop out. But if I were a Republican running for president, I probably want to see him stay in. Be because you think he's beatable. A Republican, the polls seem to suggest that. That's what the polls we're seeing say. Of course, we're a year out. A, a year out. What do you make of uh, Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker sort of firmly aligning himself with Joe Biden, traveling to Miami for the debate, being there in the spin room, then President Biden traveling to Illinois the very next day to go and talk about the union jobs and the UAW strike uh, being averted or, or being, you know, reaching a deal there. I mean, J.B. Pritzker is really firmly planting his flag right next to the incumbent president. Do you think there's a cabinet position for him in the future? Is that? <laughs> well, we know from reporting uh, that he was very interested in a potential cabinet position mm -hmm. should uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton had won in 2016. That didn't work out for him. Right. Um, but if if you're a lot of people look at Gretchen Whitmer and mm -hmm. Governor Gavin Newsom out in California and say, well, maybe they'd be the next candidate up should the president step aside. Yeah, uh, people are saying that about Andy Bashir after the win in Kentucky, right? Mm -hmm. So I think there are a lot of people positioning themselves for that 2028 run. But right now, I think, you know, Pritzker's shorter term goal could be a cabinet position. It might be more likely. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, very interesting. So what more can we look for uh, as it relates to, we, we, I want to circle back to that abortion question, because we know that could be a question on the ballot in 2024 in Missouri. But mm -hmm. if I understand correctly, it could be on the ballot earlier than November, not when people are actually showing up to vote for the president. That's right. Some Missourians might remember back in 2018 when we voted on the Right to Work initiative. That was actually an August election, not November. And so um, the Secretary of State and those who make the calendar decisions have some sway over when that goes on the ballot. So one strategy, if they think that could energize liberal voters, young voters, um, maybe tax some of those suburban women, then maybe they put in the August ballot so it doesn't affect those other races in November. That depresses turn out a bit when their names are also on the ballot That's as right. well in, in the general election. Something to watch for uh, in the months ahead. Alina Mania, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right. When can the St. Louis County uh, put the Ram settlement funds to use? County Executive Sam Page explains why that may take some time coming up. Feels good to be home. Black Friday is going on now at Ashley. This week only, get up to $1,000 off your purchase. Like this two-piece leather power reclining living room set, now $1,000 off. Plus, Friday through Monday, veterans save an extra 5%. Only at Ashley.
That's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Your Buick parks itself. That's so you. Of course you know where we're going. That's so you. I got a six cents. And a head-up display. They're here. At the heart of every Buick SUV is you. Get 1.9% APR. Plus, current eligible non-GM owners get up to $12.50 purchase allowance on 2023 Buick SUV models. Plus, no monthly payments until 2024. Flavor on and on. I'm in the Flavor driver's seat. We keep our options open. Mm. Our night's lit. Rally's Flavor is on at $1.99. You choose Jack the Barbecue Burger, the sauced up A1 Swiss Burger, or Rally's Classic Bacon Cheddar Crisp. $1.99 each. Tonight, we're on. $1.99. You choose. And Rally's Classic Wings, now only a dollar each. People ask me how I knew I wanted to be a part of the family furniture business. That's simple. It speaks to me. I earned my butterfly leaves in Ohio. I was built strong in Dublin, Georgia. Solid hickory. Save big on American-made furniture during the Miller Furniture and Mattress Grand Opening Celebration Sale going on now through November 30th. American-made, family-owned Miller Furniture. We're putting the family in furniture. Naomi Mathis, an Air Force veteran. So I'm Adam Greathouse, United States Army. Greg Gatson, Colonel, United States Army. When I came back home, I realized something wasn't right with me. I was wounded as a battalion commander. I thought I was going to be stuck there. I thought everyone forgot me. Hi, I'm Congressman Sam Graves. Make sure our veterans get the support that they earn and that they deserve. Take the time to thank those who have put everything on the line for us. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters in this station. Feels good to be home. Ashley's Black Friday mattress sale is going on now. Get 0% interest for 60 months on top mattress brands. Plus, get Ashley's price match guarantee on all mattress purchases. Save $1,000 on Sealy Princeton Queen mattresses only at Ashley. He runs the largest local government in the state of Missouri. His predecessor was once heralded as the would-be king of St. Louis, but he's the St. Louis County Executive Sam Page, and he joins us now on the record. Good to have you with us. Thank you. The biggest issue on the ballot for local voters this last Tuesday was this question about the border dispute in Manchester, in St. Louis County, and voters there roundly rejected this uh, Manchester push to absorb them into their boundaries. You're the county executive. You didn't really have to get so involved, but you got really into this thing personally. Why? I was certainly invested in this because it's important to St. Louis County and we were hearing from the residents that they were upset about it. This attempt was made about 20 years ago and failed and it came before the voters and was re resoundingly defeated by almost 80 percent of the vote with uh, one of the highest historic turnouts in a special election that anyone can remember. But you weren't just only amplifying their voices, you were also trying to persuade them to vote against it. Yeah, this was bad for St. Louis County, it was bad for them. And St. Louis County would have lost a little bit of revenue from this. It would have been a wash for the services we provide. But most importantly, it was disrupting our police footprint. So a little bit of revenue. There's already a budget deficit in the county. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but just the, the bigger picture that it conjures up is that there's this sort of tug of war between local governments over wh which taxpayers will belong to, to which. You know, in most of the rest of the country, cities and counties can coexist. They can collaborate, coordinate, not compete. Here, they do. Well, I think there's an enormous amount of collaboration that isn't discussed openly and, uh, you know, disagreements get much more attention than when things are going well. You've always said that. Um, what we first recognize is that St. Louis County, the unincorporated area of St. Louis County, is the largest, the second largest city in the state of Missouri after Kansas City. Mm -hmm. There's 330 residents who are in unincorporated St. Louis County and we are essentially their city government. And we provide those services in an efficient way and we keep their taxes relatively low and we have the largest, most sophisticated police department in, in the Midwest, the only triple accredited police department in the Midwest. And, and uh, we're proud of those services and we wanna see that continue. I don't know if Manchester and the ballot question there is the perfect example of this, but given the history of Better Together and some of the different fiefdoms fighting for their play in St. Mm -hmm. Louis County, it, it reminds me of that thing Abraham Lincoln used to say, just to paraphrase him back then, is that government exists so that we can do together the things we can't do alone. But it seems in St. Louis County, governments try so hard to do things alone, we can't do the big things together. There are many layers of government in St. Louis County, or more so than other parts of the region. 
But what St. Louis County does is we provide a lot of the services for municipal government. 90% of their routine services we cover, permits, uh, inspections, um, uh, routine tasks, and we have police contracts for about 20 municipalities where we provide their police service as well. It's budget season. The county council wants to break into that $169 million safe box. The Ram settlement money is sitting there on the shelf. Do you want to spend it now? How would you spend it? Well, it's $175 million now because Plus we've gotten interest. about $5 million of interest this year, and I think that's a good path. It's a high interest rate environment. My preference is to keep that money working for us and uh, returning interest while we work through a very complicated process of spending the ARPA money that we still have and we're working through. We, we need to work our way through the ARPA money before we break into the NFL settlement. So don't touch the Rams money until 2026? Well, at least for another year or two until we have a, a good path towards spending the ARPA money. It's very complicated to spend that money because of a lot of complex federal regulation around it. And it's gonna take a lot of bandwidth and infrastructure in, in St. Louis County to process those funds. Mm -hmm. And we just need to be thoughtful about it. Uh, the Rams money doesn't come with the same strings attached that the money came from the U.S. Treasury. U.S. Mm -hmm. Treasury said these are one-time funds, the pandemic money. Don't spend it on ongoing expenses, spend it on one-time things. That would make actuarial sense, mm -hmm. I think. W will you uh, apply the same logic or application to the Rams money? Only one-time uses, not long-term programs. Well, the way you would divide that first is that would you leave the Ram, would we leave Rams money as an endowment and just collect the interest off of it, five to seven million dollars a year indefinitely? And I don't think we're going to do that. Uh, but the Rams money is one-time money just like the stimulus funds. Mm -hmm. It's a single source. It's not ongoing. Uh, when it's gone, it's gone. Right. So with a budget deficit, I guess there's a big broader question about how to use that to the best effect. Uh, another question though about the well, budget. Let's go back to that budget deficit a minute. Mm -hmm. We have a, a gap between revenues and expenditures um, when we propose our budget. Much of that uh, expenditure that's budgeted is returned at the end of the year unspent. So the, the $26 million or so gap isn't going to be the actual gap at the end of the year. That will probably close because we won't spend as much as budgeted. The other part of that is even though we have a gap between revenues and expenditures, we have over $200 million cash reserves. So if the budget deficit isn't as bad as it looks on paper, why do you want to raise property taxes? Well, what I've proposed is keeping the property tax rate the same as uh, because the Hancock Amendment uh, requires us to roll it back. And if you watch local governments across the region, um, almost everyone will always roll up the property tax back to its original rate when the Hancock Amendment ro forces us to roll it back, essentially ca capturing inflation in, in your budget, recognizing mm -hmm. that the things that we purchase in government go up, just like the things that everybody else purchases. One of the things you called for cutting out of the budget was shot spotter. These are the technical sensors that can kind of help police locate where a gunshot came from. Is that what police want right now, is less data to solve gun crimes? What police have told me that they want is more resources spent on community relations. And uh, the initial feedback I got from the police department was that they would like to see more investments in their community outreach programming. Shot spotter has some value. Every police technique tool all has value, but they all have res relative value. Prosecutor Wesley Bell in St. Louis County wants mm -hmm. to keep Shot Spotter. Um, he's also running first for the U.S. Senate. Now he's shifted to run for Congress. Do you have full confidence that he can do his job as prosecutor and run for that higher federal office? Many people who run for office currently hold an office, and this is a balancing act that everyone has to figure out how to do, how to run the office you're in while you campaign for another office, and I'm sure he'll figure that out. Do you have full confidence that he's doing that now? Uh, I'm sure he will be able to do his job as prosecuting attorney. He won't be at every meeting. He will send some of his staff members. I'm sure he'll stay in touch of what's happening. County Executive Sam Page, thanks for joining us. You bet. Thanks. What was it? A letter from Josh Hawley to a Biden cabinet secretary and the reason Air Force One took a midweek trip to the land of Lincoln. Local political headlines coming up next. Getting two of my croissants with a freshly cracked egg for just six bucks means your day is off to a good start. And I serve them all day because I'm not here to judge what time your day starts. For over a century, local broadcasting has evolved with the needs of the community. We move past the stigmas of opinion journalism and bring the most relevant news online, on air, and on the go. You have trusted us with your news, sports, weather, and entertainment. 
Trust us to keep moving with you. Text TB to 52886 and tell Congress local broadcasting is here to stay. Wonder Lights Christmas in St. Louis is brighter than ever at Worldwide Technology Raceway. The holliest, jolliest light show around is celebrating the season from November 17th until December 31st. Tickets available at the gate and online at wonderlightschristmas.com. Jingle all the way to Worldwide Technology Raceway and have yourself a Merry Christmas, St. Louis. Hi everyone watching at home. We're here to remind you that if you or someone you know were injured in an accident that was not your fault, listen up. We have live agents available right now to answer your questions and tell you how much your case is potentially worth. Hi, I'm Gina Belich here with spokesman and TV personality Tom Mustin with us in the Help Center. So Tom, phones are really busy over there. Tell us what kind of calls you're seeing. Well, Gina, first off, thank you for having me here in the call center with you. We always enjoy talking to the viewers and getting folks the compensation that they deserve. You know, we're seeing calls about all kinds of accidents, but the most common by far has been car accidents. So if you or someone you know were injured in an accident that was not your fault, give us a call right now. You'll speak with a live person. They'll answer any questions you have and tell you if you have a case and how much your case is potentially worth. Thanks, Tom. All right, folks at home, you heard it. Take advantage of this opportunity and call now. You can get two of my croissants with a freshly cracked egg for just six bucks. And I serve them all day, so you can enjoy them for breakfast, brunch, or even Brinner. Did I just make up Brinner? Can we trademark that? President Joe Biden visited United Auto Workers in Illinois this week. Not very close to St. Louis, a lot farther north. But he and Governor Pritzker toured the Stellantis assembly plant in Belvedere to celebrate bringing union jobs back online. About 3,000 union workers will build electric be uh, vehicle batteries there, and he used that stage to take a swipe at former President Donald Trump. And here's the difference. When you're in the middle of a fight, I stood and others stood with you shoulder to shoulder on that picket line. Yep. My predecessor went to a non-union shop and attacked me. A t-shirt while he was there. As Biden left the White House en route to Illinois, he took questions about a potential ceasefire in Gaza. You heard him there say no possibility. That answer did not sit well with Biden's left flank. Democrats like Congresswoman Cori Bush amplified their calls for a ceasefire on that same day, arguing you can't bomb your way to peace. I expect that there will be change, and there will be change because we won't stop. The people won't stop. The people that elected this president are screaming out, saying, we want to cease fire now. And so we believe that our president will hear us. A veterans group about face joined Bush and her Democratic colleagues outside the Capitol and called on Congress to end the, quote, cycle of endless war. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen got some mail this week from Senator Josh Hawley. The Missouri senator wants the Treasury to extend the due date for Yellow Corporation to pay off its COVID-era federal loans. You might remember that company in the headlines a few months back. Hawley says flexibility in that loan will protect Teamsters benefits after the freight giant filed for bankruptcy earlier this year. And to Springfield, the Illinois electric grid could soon get a reprieve. Lawmakers greenlit the construction of micronuclear reactors at big manufacturing plants or on university campuses. The clean power generation is expected to take a load off the grid the rest of us rely on. The Democratic-run Statehouse did not take up a measure to extend the Invest in Kids private school tax credit scholarship program before the end of the fall veto session, which means that program will expire at the end of the year. We look back at an American war hero on this Veterans Day weekend when we come back. Hardy's newest handcrafted recipe, candied bacon. Coated with caramelized brown sugar and a hint of pepper to add a whole new level of goodness to breakfast, lunch, dinner, or anytime. Hardy's, goodness in the making. 
I had just gotten off work. All of a sudden, I was hit from behind. I had blood all over my face and it was on my shirt. I immediately thought of Morgan and Morgan, that initial first phone call and conversation. It felt like reaching out to a friend. All of the correspondence was done pretty much by email and text. I barely had to lift a finger. I would absolutely recommend Morgan and Morgan to family and friends and even strangers because that's how much it helped me. It's easier than you think. That's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Your Buick parks itself. That's so you. Of course you know where we're going. That's so you. Kinda got a six cents. And a head of display. They're here. At the heart of every Buick SUV is you. Get 1.9% APR. Plus, current eligible non-GM owners get up to $12.50 purchase allowance on 2023 Buick SUV models. Plus, no monthly payments until 2024. Title Max got your money, your real money. Get started at TitleMax.com and turn your title into cash. Get up to $10,000 today using your car title. Most credit types accepted. I got $2,500 with my car title from Title Max. Visit TitleMax.com today to find out how much you can get. I got $1,500 with a personal loan from Title Max. Life is full of options, but when it comes to cash, the choice is clear. Get your title back with Title Max. When you can find not one, not two, but five highly rated complete dining sets with six chairs and multiple configurations for only $9.99 each, just in time for Black Friday, there's only one thing to say. Oh, my Bob! Bob's Discount Furniture. It's five at the Fox. You could win a pair of tickets to Mrs. Doubtfire. Don't miss this new hit musical that's heartwarming and laugh out loud funny. Register at KSDK.com and winners will be announced weekly on Today in St. Louis. Register by November 30th. Hardy's Double Deals pack double the charbroiled beef and melty cheese. Choose a double cheeseburger or bacon double cheeseburger starting at $2.99. Hardee's, goodness in the making. Get exclusive offers on the Hardee's app. Before we leave you on this Veterans Day weekend, let's check the record. He's gone now, but one of America's most notable veterans was one step away from the White House in the fall of 2008. Republicans had just nominated a Navy captain, a prisoner of war, and U.S. Senator John McCain to represent the party in the race for president. McCain told the crowd at his nominating speech, quote, I don't mind a good fight. For reasons known only to God, I've had quite a few tough ones in my life, but I learned an important lesson along the way. In the end, it matters less that you can fight. What you fight for is the real test. That's all of our time this week. Until next time, we're off the record.